I need my chapstick. <laughs> I always seem to start my videos and realize that like my lips are gonna get dry really fast. Um, I don't know when this shift happened, but I went from searching people and um, religious text to help me find answers in life to suddenly then almost pushing that aside and just going inward and finding the answers there. Um, I wish I could say there was like that pinnacle moment that that like really like had me shutting one off and you know shutting off you know searching to other people for answers um, and then going within I, I, but I can't, I can't say when that happened. Um, and I think what, yeah, I think I can see when that started to happen. You know, I went through like an, an existential crisis is like the best way. I didn't know it was an, existen an existential crisis. I thought it was, um, a very early midlife crisis, uh, slash personality crisis. I just remember feeling very alone in this crisis that I was in because while everyone that I could have turned to I knew would have wonderful answers because the people in my life are wonderful. I knew that I could turn to my husband and he would have wonderful answers. I could turn to my mom and she would have wonderful answers. And I could turn to my church leaders and they would have wonderful answers. And I could turn to scriptures and, they, and that would have wonderful answers. And yet I realized that I needed a very personal answer. And not what someone thinks should be my answer. And I'm not saying that people aren't inspired to receive the inspiration, the insight to give to give another person. I'm not excusing that. But I knew this, the questions I had, I had to find within myself. And, and I remember going to God with that. So and I think that was kind of the where the scales started to tip. You know, I didn't know how to find like true answers for myself other than like a few moments in my life. Like I didn't I didn't spend every day searching within. It was like during the big times in my life, you know, was was when I went to really like search and feel if I needed to do what it was I felt compelled to do or or in um, finding which path is the best one to take you know and then every everywhere else in in all the other things in my life I would go to someone else or you know go to scriptures or, or those kind of things go to church leaders you know that kind of stuff you know and um, and amongst all of this I'm looking at the clock because I don't have much time to talk to you guys. I realized how amazing science is. I've always loved science. I remember in the second grade saying that I wanted to be a scientist and then uh, my teacher said, well, um, you're going to be in school for a long time <laughs> or something like that. And I was like, oh, my, my, never mind. Maybe I don't want to be a scientist. I always thought that if I leaned more towards science, that it would take me away from, from God or from spirituality, I guess you could say. And I have found over the last many years that as I've embraced science, I've found where science has backed up my spirituality. And not only that, it helps me embrace more of my spirituality. And then I thought about all the different kind of belief systems there are. I mean, like when it comes to it, whether it's either science or it's spirituality. And, and I guess, am I wrong to believe that why can't we all have both? You know, I don't think I'm necessarily a fence writer. I think I just tore down the fence and just called the whole field mine. 
And while I like don't understand scientific terms and, and I'm not like super smart with science, I love reading about it and, and it creating that spark within me to, to keep doing what I'm doing with my spirituality. And I've noticed too how much nature can teach us. And just this morning I took a picture on Instagram and it was a picture of the sun shining through the clouds. And, and I said something, what was my, my, um, my note below it said, I love how the sun just is. And I love how the sun will just shine, shine and shine and shine. And the clouds might cover her up. And when the clouds cover up, she doesn't dim herself and go, oh, I'm, I apologize. I'm, I must, uh, I should probably dim up a little bit. But no, she just shines. Because while right now in Texas, we need a little rain, maybe over there in Michigan, they need her to shine bright to melt all of the winter snow. So I just thought about how, how like, we are created to be, to be who we are. And I mention that a lot on, on this channel, you know, and um, I love how also, I have two mature, two hugely mature trees in my front yard. And um, while I love them, I hate them. And we just won't go into, into the reasons why that is. But every year, this tree over here to my right, in the fall, that tree's leaves fall before the one over here on the left. And then come spring, this tree on the right blooms before this tree on the left. But they're both doing it in the right time. And you know, I'll look down this street here and I'll watch the differing colors of the leaves in the fall and how some of these trees will fall, their leaves will fall before the other trees and yet they're not concerned about what the other tree is doing. If anything, from what I've heard, some of them will intertwine their roots and be connected and unified as one with their differences. So they don't try to play catch up they don't look at the other and go, hey, it's spring, why aren't you blooming now? You know, they just accept each other for how they are. And they just let things be. They don't put an agenda on each other. You know? I feel like I learn a lot just from sitting outside and observing. You know, when people say when you're really stressed or you've got anxiety or you're depressed, go outside into nature. And they say, and ground yourself. Now, I don't know exactly what grounding, your, <laughs> what grounding yourself means. I mean, like, I have my own ideas as to what that could be. I think that just means just, like, just connect with, just connect your body with this earth. But I find that you learn a lot, you know, and there is this, um... My sister-in-law told me this story of her friend who was sitting by a tree and saw an ant come walking by. So he grabs a handful of dirt and puts it on the ant. And sure enough, the ant just crawls up out of that pile of dirt and just keeps going. So he grabbed another pile of dirt and put it on top of the ant. And the ant did the same thing, just climbed up that little mound of dirt and kept going so that's just something I'm thinking about today so yeah just wanted to share that with you guys and I hope you guys are doing well and you know what summer is almost here and it's like a happy sad for me um, I love the summer and I love having my kids home uh, uh, it's sad just because um, then the school year is going to start soon. And then like my whole schedule is going to change. <laughs> and that sounds so selfish. I'm going to have three kids in three different schools. 
And, <laughs> and like right now my schedule is like flawless. I've had it this way for years, you know? So now I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to change up my gym time. I'm going to have to maybe go to a different gym. You know, okay, I'm gonna have to figure out, all right, you know, like literally like it's gonna get to where I have to take my daughter to a class, drop my son off at the bus, go right and pick her up to class from that class, take her to another class. It's just gonna be like kind of crazy. So, but I'm excited. I'm always excited for the change that each season brings, even if it goes by too fast. Or if I'm not ready for it, which I feel like that's I feel like that's like my whole life is like I am not ready. But you know what? Then we you know we look back and we realize we were okay and we were taken care of. So that is it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.